Hello there guys, in this video this is going to be a tutorial on how to fix these these disconnect issues with these keyboards. This is a Quickfire TK, one of the more problematic models I know of. I know me and Ryan have had issues with these and to keep this short and sweet to the point, we're going to go ahead and disassemble this and I'll show you exactly what the problem is. Now to disassemble this, you just turn it right over, you're going to want to peel these two upper pads off here. Just get those off. Should not put up too much of a fight. Put those aside. And you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws to pull out here. One is gonna be under a seal here. So if you're gonna do this at this point, you've probably already accepted that Cooler Master just isn't gonna give you a keyboard that's gonna be functional. And with how many of these that I've noticed have been, at least around the internet, have had issues, it might not be wise to just wait on an RMA just to take the problem into your own hand. Uh, if you know how to solder, even the most basic soldering skill will get you through this. It's not that hard. I'm terrible at it myself. That screw's just going to be a pain. Just get it out enough to be able to get the top bezel off. Come on, get in there. And there, that one came out. Now, you need a spudger to get the bezel off. You can pry it off other, um, with other means, but I like to use a plastic spudger because it just undoes all the snaps pretty effectively around the side of the keyboard and just run it along. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and just splay out the case a little bit here. This thing can be a pain. If you have long nails, that's also a good use for those here. This thing is kind of fun. There we go. Once you work it in there, you could do like me and just close it up again. I would wedge a finger in here like this to kind of keep it from closing back up because it's, these snaps are not that, they're not that secure. So anyway, that comes off and now you're presented with your actual keyboard. Now here you've got a screw up here, screw up here, and two more down here with what looks like a third one would be here. And I don't think there is on this one, but if there is, go ahead and remove it if you have one on your board. But once you get these guys out, actually I'm gonna get that with my other screwdriver because I don't wanna lose those screws, that would be terrible. Now, know that I've already done the fix on this keyboard. I'm just kind of gonna show you what you need to do. Or in my case, what was wrong with my keyboard. Even if you're in warranty, this could actually save you a lot of time. Because as we all know, time is money. So once those four screws are out, you're gonna wanna slightly lift up. Do not lift it up too much because it's still attached to the bottom of the back panel, I'm trying to think of a good, good use of that. And if you twist it to the side here, you can see back here that you've got the USB board and it's screwed in with only one screw, which seems kind of counterintuitive, but hey, whatever, right? So just go ahead and unscrew that. And with that, you can now get that, pop that up. And it's gonna put up a little bit of a fight. And that's why I just took the entire pin with it. That's no problem. That's no problem at all. So here's the problematic part. And I've already done a fix on this. But in my case, the ground wire, which is the black wire, had come completely detached from the board. Um, and then you have an additional ground here, which is 
I don't know if that was helping it actually work for the few times it was. But I re-soldered it and applied some adhesive here to keep it held down in place. As you can see, they did the same thing on the USB end of the board, but they didn't do the same here. So when I actually went to twist this off the first time, the black uh, ground wire just came right off. And at that point, the keyboard was then completely dead to the world. So what I'm thinking happened here is that it had an intermittent connection so when the disconnect happened, it was losing connection right here. And then it, the wire would probably, with a little bit of moving, meet up with the, the uh, solder point again, thus allowing it to reconnect and continue working for a little bit. So after, ever since I've done this, now uh, the keyboard has been completely fine. I've not had a single issue with it. And yeah, I mean, this is the keyboard that I've been wanting like it, it works great now I only wish I discovered this sooner back when I bought the keyboard because uh, it would have been nice to have this thing working like a long time ago so we're gonna go ahead and just put this back down here um, if I can get it back down there we go it's got some snaps on the side that also help keep it in place take this screw here and get it back in. Change direction on a screwdriver. It's not very tight because you don't want to strip out the plastic. Put this back in, lay it down. Put in our screws. And I have to say, as much as I don't like Cooler Masters keyboards, for the reason that I don't like LG and that, you know, it feels like they're built very cheaply on the inside, I must say this keyboard was actually a pleasure to take apart. I did not have an issue with it at all. It came apart very easily. As you see, it's going back together quite nicely, then we just Snap that back on, turn the keyboard back over, put those back, do those ones first because that way we can just get these out back in and out of the way. You don't need to make this overly tight. Don't do what I did with my DOS keyboard and strip out a stud. Because that would be a terrible thing to do. Just like that, our keyboard is all one. Then plug that back in. Make sure, I have this oriented correctly. Then plug it in on the hub side. There you have it. Uh, what the? Interesting. And then if we come up here, we can see switch hitter. Keyboard works just fine. And 
we can go ahead and switch it into, uh, let's see, put in FM lock mode. That should switch it into end key rollover mode. And normally it would have trouble with this, so. And now, as you can see, works just fine. Whoops, <laughs> did not mean to do that. Yeah, works great now. I'm actually very, very happy with this. So, yeah, th I'm not gonna say this is the end all be all of fixes, but in my case, it fixed the disconnect problem completely and totally. I've been using this keyboard heavily for the last day or so, and I have not had a single disconnect, where normally I'd have multiple disconnects a day. So, yeah, I'm gonna say, I mean, check out your solder joints if you really don't have anything else to lose at this point. So, hopefully you got something out of this video, and I'll see you guys later.